Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I will be focusing on how to invest $1,000 or £1,000. Now, if you're in this situation, I hope that you'll be able to find some of these points which I'm gonna make quite useful and you can also apply them um, to your own situation and do further research as well. Now, in the video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off by not only speaking about how to actually invest the £1,000 or dollars, um, I'm going to be speaking about a few things and including kind of like the mindset behind all of this as well. So let's get right into it. If you have a thousand dollars, you need to be in the mindset of growing your income. Now, you know, well done for having that much money. I mean, many other people in the world do not have a thousand dollars to hand or to even think about investing. So first of all, it's kind of like give yourself a pat on the back. Well done for having a thousand dollars. However, you need to have the mindset of focusing on growing your income rather than trying to grow the $1,000 at this point. Now, I will go into how you can actually deploy the $1,000 into different types of investments, but I just wanna say, first of all, off the bat, that you need to change your mindset. Now, this is not to say you can't invest $1,000. I mean, because if you think about compound interest, then of course you can start even with nothing. And over the long term, in you know, 10, 15, 20 years, you will have a substantial amount of money. First things first is ensure that you have an emergency fund. Now, personally, I define emergency fund as um, between you know three to six months of your expenses saved up. So you know that's in case of like I said, it's literally what it says on the tin: emergency fund. So if you run into anything unexpectedly, medical bill, your car breaks down, or anything else, um, you have a major maintenance due in your house or anything else. You have something to go by so you don't actually lose money out of your pocket or you don't take money out of your other savings or investments that's the first thing first now the second thing to think about is to ensure that all you, the debt you might have is already covered now this is regarding um bad debt so i'm not referring to um you know a loan for the house or i'm not referring to maybe student loan that's slightly different i'm talking about credit card loan and maybe payday loans and those type of things so make sure that you have those covered first because typically the interest on those will be more than the interest you're going to make from your investment. So ensure that you have all your debt covered, especially if it's bad debt, um, before you even think about investing um, your $1,000. So you need to decide your risk tolerance, um, how much risk you can um, literally tolerate. Um, so you can have someone who's a bit more aggressive and you can have someone who's a bit more um, conservative when it comes to investing and that will kind of determine the type of investments that you make of course um so as an example um you know if you're more aggressive you can literally pick stocks individual stocks and if you're more um passive or more conservative then you can pick something um, which is less risky such as um maybe index funds or etf but the fourth point is i personally believe that you need to invest in yourself now i know you might have heard this before um I'm, unfortunately or fortunately it's quite it's it's the truth you need to invest in yourself first and foremost before anything else i mean even warren buffett says you know pay yourself first then pay others after so invest in yourself now this is not just money this could be time as well so you know books are not expensive you know you have books um endless books um uh, on kindle or you can buy physical books and tell it to you now books i love books because they summarize someone's literally entire life in a book of a couple of hours and they're literally like ten dollars or whatever so investing yourself first um could be taking a course it could be skilling up in your job to potentially get a pay rise um it could be just learning a new topic that you can leverage um it could be learning how to invest in real estate it could be learning stocks my last point on investing yourself is um you can also take a little bit of a shortcut um and actually get yourself a mentor now that will save you um Lots of money and most importantly lots of time um, in the future so get yourself a mentor someone who's done it who's done whatever it is that you want to do and you'll have a lot of shortcuts and i put that in the category of investing in yourself the first thing is which i'll suggest is crowdfunding platforms um now this is basically where you have um an asset and people um like put a pool of money together um uh, so for example you could have this in the in the sense of um a business or it could be a real estate development um, project. Um, there's plenty of um, crowdfunding platforms out there. So you can kind of start off with that. Um, similar very similar as well to peer-to-peer -peer lending as well. Um, so you can try those things out as well. 
and see which one you kind of like the feel of. Now with crowdfunding, like I said, you have project developments that you can invest in as well. Now a little hack is some of them actually allow you to go to the site. So let's say you invest in a, um, I don't know, a block of flats in central London through a cloud crowdfunding platform um, and the developer managing that, devel that development, um, sometimes they actually allow you to go to the site and visit it and get regular updates. Now you can also take this as kind of like a learning curve. So you can invest with professional developers and learn from them um, in person as well at the same time. Another thing to consider is index funds and ETFs. Now this is something I've spoken about on this channel quite a lot. Um, now ETFs and index funds, um, they're diverse. There's so many options. Now, if you don't know what that is, um, please do your own research. I mean, again, this is not investment, investment advice. However, I personally like the total stock market index which is the entire stock market of the US. Um, now this includes, of course, the S&P 500, but it also includes the medium and small cap stocks as well, versus um, just the S&P 500, which just include the big um, 500 companies within the US. Um, so that's the main difference. So the total stock market index includes small and medium caps, and then the S&P just includes the big companies. Now, actually the growth would normally come from the medium and small cap companies, that's why I prefer um, that index fund or that in, that fund uh, when it comes to investing in funds as well. So that's again something um, as an idea of where you can put your $1,000 as well. Um, if you kind of want to be more passive and just let your money grow over the long term as well. I'd, if you do um, you know, choose this option, I'd recommend that you just dollar cost average um, rather than putting one lump sum in. So as an example, if you have $1,000, Put hundred dollars a month or fifty dollars a month. If you have a bit more risk tolerance, you can also go into picking stocks, individual stocks. So, as an example, um, you have two choice. You have two options. You got growth stocks such as Tesla. These are companies which are not yet producing um, profits as such. Um, however, they're investing heavy in R and D, and um, of course, they have a view that in the future they're going to produce um, insane returns, and the stock will, of course, um, follow that as well. Um, on the other side, you also have um, um, dividend paying stocks such as Coca-Cola. Now, Coca-Cola is not really going to grow um, anytime soon, but it is very stable. So it's not going to have, um, it's not going to be going up and down anytime soon. Um, and it will also pay you dividends. Um, but another thing to bear in mind is, in my opinion, if you're starting now in individual stocks, I would rather focus on growth stocks because you have the best chance of, of actually growing your money. So, you know, imagine if you put, let's say $1,000 in Tesla, let's say, I don't know, six, five years ago, um, and compared to what the price is now, you'd be in a, in a very good position versus if you put $1,000 in maybe Coca-Cola um, up, up until now, you know, Coca-Cola does pay dividends. However, you kind of need a lot of money when it comes to dividends um, investing for, for you to actually be able to kind of retire or for you to kind of actually live off the dividends um, that the stock would give you. So. If you just have a thousand dollars, I'd recommend that you potentially look at some growth stocks to actually grow your capital. And then maybe in the future, you can diversify and go into some dividend paying stocks as well in the future, um, just to protect your money, protect your money as well. So that's my advice, guys, when it comes to how to invest a thousand dollars. First of all, um, just your mindset, get your mindset in check. Think about growing your income rather than how to invest a thousand dollars. But if you do want to invest a thousand dollars, then I've mentioned a few things such as crowdfunding platforms um, as one. So this could be um, this could be real estate project. This could be peer to peer lending. Uh, it could be even some companies as well, if you wish, if you um, have a long term horizon, um, depending on your risk, risk tolerance. Um, you can also go into index funds and ETFs as well. Um, like I said, I prefer the total stock market index. Um, and then lastly, you also have you can also just pick individual stocks as well. Um, but mostly important, the most important thing I kind of said in this is to actually invest in yourself. Uh, so guys, that's my thoughts on how to invest a thousand dollars and how and what the best way is to think about it. Now, I hope that helps you to start on your financial journey. Um, and yeah, I'll see you on the next video.